Hi, I'm Chelsea and I'm one of the architects at Third Way. Today, some of us are going to talk to you about placemaking in the office and what that really means. As an architect in the commercial fit-out industry, I deal more with um, cat A design and actually not knowing who the end user is. So the question is, how can we still create a space that is bespoke, puts a stamp on that particular place where it might be, and create something really exciting. For the last three years at Third Ray Architecture, we have completed a range of buildings from Chapter House, Settle Street and Provost Street. And later on this year, we should be completing a number of other Cat A spaces, such as Lowman Street, The Script, and the project that I'm gonna to talk to you about in particular, which is Corn Street in Bristol. So Corn Street was a really exciting one for us because it was actually presented to us as two individual buildings that both had their own unique character. In order to create this amazing space within these two buildings, it was the origin, the brand and the place itself. Obviously the origin of these two buildings were very, very different. Each building had their own really unique reception space and we played around with the material. So in the Brutalist building, using a lot of raw concrete with some copper accents for that industrial look. And then in the Art Deco classical building, we went for something richer, more luxurious, brass accents, a lot of heritage colours, heritage features. The brand was something that as architects, we still want to create, particularly for the marketing stages of those two buildings. So the Art Deco building, the address was 37 to 39 Corn Street. And that's a bit long winded. So instead we looked at the architect who designed the building, Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, legendary architect. So we came up with Gilbert House. It's punchy, it sells the space and it just feels like a place you want to be. So I'm Faye, I work within the creative team. What our specialty is, is kind of figuring out how to best use a client's branding within the new home, within the new space. And so we wanted to have personality, we wanted to have an identity, and every company has their own identity. The fair trade, you have to be playful, but you have to remember it still needs to have heart and compassion because what they're doing is about changing lives and it's for the betterment of people worldwide. Finding those little ties to who they are, their identity that you can bring back and bring that excitement and that fun into it. The thing that also sets us apart as architects within the Third Way group is having that constant interaction with interior designers who are actually very human-centric focused. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm an interior designer at Third Way. So what is human-centered design? It basically means putting the user at the centre of all design decisions. So whether it be spatial, materiality-wise or strategic. Coming from a Cat B fit-out point of view, we already know the end user and we know the talent that's going in. So we may as well take advantage of that and make sure that the workspace that we're designing really works for the everyday life of the people that are going to be in it. We use a few methods of abstracting that data, embedding, one-to-one -one interviews, day-in-the-life surveys and the vision workshops. So after all this, we were able to combine the data and put it through a process called ethnography. And this would enable us to pull out certain trends, certain cultures that we'd seen throughout our research. From this, we were able to create some defined personas. Some of these include a visitor, the engineer, the maker, the apprentice, and the coordinator. So all of these people have different needs, different wants, and like aspirations out of the workplace that we're designing. So it was a really great way to keep checking back and making sure that our like, human-centric approach hadn't got lost within the design process. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, you're talking about place. So that's the context as well as the surrounding context. So for example, with Provost Street, that was in the middle of Shoreditch, you're immediately blessed with everything Shoreditch that you can bring into that place. With 41 Corn Street and Gilbert House, it was something very similar. So this is something that Bristol had never seen before. And 
immediately you can have so much fun with putting your stamp inside both of those buildings. We have a look at what the surrounding context is in terms of materiality, in terms of do you need to actually carve into your massing to be a little bit more sympathetic to the surrounding architecture. All of those things mean that we can't actually have a house style because a site and a building, whether that's existing or a complete new build, is completely subjective to that place. So together we can create an architectural space, but then feed into that from the very, very early stages, all of the things that the end user would want and need and feel like that place is their home.